about because of a hostile environment policy that was begun under her Prime Minister. If you lay down with dogs, you get fleas. And that is what has happened with this far-right rhetoric in this country. From 2010, the government's doing everything it could to cut immigration numbers. We would like to see net immigration in the tens of thousands rather than the hundreds of thousands. A huge part of that was tackling illegal immigration. This is not just about making the UK a more hostile place for illegal migrants. It is also about fairness. What this bill is, does is actually make it harder for people who are here illegally to be able to carry on living in the UK. It's important for Britain, but it's got to be controlled and managed so that the system is fair. They met with a bunch of migrants in Calais. They said they could all come to Britain. They set up this task force to create what they called a hostile environment for anybody who didn't have exactly the right documents. Forgetting, I think, that a huge number of people who are in the UK legitimately, the Windrush generation uh, and other Commonwealth migrants, don't have papers. And so they weren't able to prove their legitimate right to be in the country. I had all my education in this country. I've worked in this country. I've lived in this country. I'm an Englishman. I couldn't understand why, you know, why. I hear rumours that, you know, this returnee resident um, thing can take up to six months. So he thought, I could be here for six months. I am concerned that the Home Office is becoming, has become too concerned with policy and strategy and sometimes lose sight of the individual. And this is about, this is about individuals. People's poet, Benjamin Zephaniah, who having just turned 60, sorry to remind you of that, <laughs> is seen by many as a national treasure, but says he's lost none of the anger he had as a young man. Really good to see you here. Good morning. We've heard this phrase again and again, the Windrush generation, this week. It means a lot more to someone like you, someone whose family were part of that generation, than to many others. What, when you hear that phrase, Wind Gen Windrush generation, what do you think of? Pioneers, in a, in a way. Um, people who had really big dreams. My mother didn't come under Windrush itself, she came just after it. But um, recently, I've had to interview my own mother because of my autobi autobiography, and uh, it's really interesting listening to her talking about how she, what she felt Britain would be like. I mean, a lot of these people came from the Caribbean thinking that people were walking down the streets of Brixton, uh, Brixton reciting Shakespeare. <laughs> they couldn't understand why every family in Britain didn't have a picture of the Queen, because they did in Jamaica. I mean, their dream of Britain was so kind of big and... and a when dream partly promoted by the posters, which were in the Caribbean. Oh, yes, yeah. Encouraging people to come. come. Come to Britain, the streets are paved with gold. Um, You're welcome, I think one of them said. Well, the, the National Health Service um, kind of promoting themselves over there. So, you know, these are people that, that came with really big dreams. So when you think of your mum as the nurse from Jamaica, your dad a postman from Barbados, as you see what's happened to people of their age, of their background, how, how does it make you feel? Look, sometimes when we talk about the black community, it's a bit fake because you have, you know, your black Muslims, you've got Christians, you've got people from Barbados and dif different islands. But now, at this moment, I think we are united and we are all angry. And even people who are not part of the Commonwealth are looking at the way that we are being treated. And, um, you know, it's even my driver here this morning was really angry. Um, but is everybody equally angry? I mean, the government has said compensation. They've apologised. Um, they said it was appalling. Do you take that at face value to say that's sincere, they made a mistake, they've learned from it, the or were you angry with them? The government promised compensation after Grenfell Tower. It's, it's, it hasn't been forthcoming. Um, 
it's it's kind of very good words, but the deeds. I mean, something has to be done immediately. I mean, what, I want to. What do you want to see? Do you want to see somebody resign? Do you want to see more money? I'd like to see head rolls, but how do you compensate somebody like the mother of um, Dexter Bristol? This is a man who died. The doctors looked at him and said, the cause of death is unknown. We know he died of a broken heart. He lost his job. He lost his benefits. He lost his dignity. And he literally just shut down and died. Now, to a lot of people watching, this story seemed to come from nowhere. But a lot of people have known for a very long time, yeah. haven't they, Benjamin? In, I'm, 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 not gonna, I'm not plugging newspapers now, but the Voice newspaper has been writing about this for years. The Guardian's picked it up recently. There's a, a journalist called Simon Israel who's been doing a lot on it. I've really felt let down by a lot of the mainstream media, and I have to say the BBC to a certain extent. You Within thought it the was there to be told? This has been going on for such a long time. This has just been building up and building up. On Monday, 12 Commonwealth heads of state asked Theresa May to debate this, and she said no. This is why it, it's come out now and people are so upset about it. It is a story now. Now, I joked at the top that you'd said, when I'm 60, I can relax a bit. Oh. You, I don't think you're relaxing, are Oh, you? no, I'm fired up. I'm really fired up. I thought by the time I got to 60, I'd be like, I wanted to be like a Rastafarian uh, a co comedian, like a bit like a Dread Lenny Henry or something like that. But no, I mean, the way things are, people are really, really upset. And I am one of those people. I mean... If you look at organisations like the Black Cultural Archives, I don't know if you know of them, they document our history. These are the people that document the history of the Windrush people for the next generation. They are losing all their funding. I mean, so it's, it, we are being attacked at so many levels. If you could speak directly to the Prime Minister on this story, what would you say to her? We need justice. We need equality. And you need to, as we say in the streets, fix up and put it right now. Benjamin Zephaniah, thank you very much for joining us. And belated happy birthday. Thank you.